Three Men Lost in Space, The Space Disaster Space is brutally unwelcoming to human life, so it's little wonder that out of the 561 people who ventured beyond the safety of Earth, only three died there. The devastating death of Russian astronauts was eye-opening and is still remembered as a mournful day in Russia. What happened? How did three astronauts die? Stay with us until the end of the video to learn about historically devastating space disasters. Space technologies can contribute to all aspects of the disaster management process, including preparedness, prevention, response, early warning, and reconstruction. We all want to know about space, planets, and the processes happening there, but not all know the struggle and disaster that goes behind it. One such disaster for scientists and NASA to alter many things in spacecrafts and space missions. What was Soyuz 11? Soyuz 11 was the first crewed mission aboard the world's first space station. The crew of Georgi Dabrowski, Vladislav Volkov, and Viktor Patsyev arrived in the space station on June 7, 1971, and departed on June 29, 1971. However, the mission ended in a complete disaster when the crew capsule depressurized and killed the three men crew during re entry preparations. The three Soyuz 11 crew members are the only people to die in space. How did the mission start? While Soyuz 11 ended in dismay, the vast majority of the mission went on gloriously. Volkov, Pitsyov, and Dabrowski lived aboard Russia's Salyut 1 space station for 23 days and setting the record for the longest stay in space at that time. During their mission, the daring cosmonauts wowed Russians back on Earth with live television broadcasts, projecting hope and painting a bright future. Patsyev also became the first person who operated a telescope in space. Spectrograms of the stars Vega and Beta Centauri, which he made with the station's ultraviolet telescope, were later published in the journal Nature. Tragedy would strike on June 30th as the cosmonauts sat unsuited inside the Soyuz descent module, awaiting re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. So what exactly happened? A breathing vent valve between the orbitable and descent modules accidentally opened during the fall path, causing the deadly depressurization of the capsule. 12 Soyuz pyro cartridges detonated simultaneously rather than one after another, shattering the two modules at 723 seconds after the retro firm. Normally, pyrotechnics are thrown much later to automatically adjust the cabin pressure, but the force of the discharge was enough to release the seal from the internal pressure relief valve mechanism. At an altitude of 168 kilometers, the crew was killed within 30 seconds as the pressure in the cabin dropped gradually. Once back ignition process began, the cabin pressure plummeted to zero with 935 seconds and stayed there for 1,640 seconds before slowly rising when the capsule penetrated the upper atmosphere. Why did scientists in the base not do anything? Russian space officials looking for the return of the cosmonauts had no idea of their dire state when the Soyuz 11 module landed on solid ground after a peaceful jump from the sky. The re-entry went without a hitch. There was no reason to expect anything was wrong. The opening of the Soyuz hatch suddenly poisoned the festive atmosphere. Rescuers witnessed a horrifying scene. All three men were found on their couches, motionless, with dark blue bruises on their faces and trails of blood from their ears and noses, Karim Kemerov recounted. Was the death painful? The struggle for resuscitation failed as well. The men almost certainly suffocated as their air from their cabin escaped into space and was replaced by a complete vacuum in which no human could survive more than 90 seconds. They would have no more than 15 seconds to find and secure the gash in their wounded cabin before they would be deaf and blind as their blood vessels burst from the pressure difference. While the exact details of their deaths were not known to the general public until several years later, the cosmonauts' departure quickly made global news. Ben Evans recounted the events in the 2013 article. Throughout Russia, the disaster caused an unprecedented wave of grief. People expressed their sorrow and wept openly in the streets because of the three men who appeared nightly on their television screens for over three weeks. Cosmonauts, who were presented as human beings rather than cold, faceless supermen, offered Apollo a clear answer that the Soviet Union was back in the manned space business and firmly in leadership. Then, instead of three heroes with broad smiles and decorated with medals and garlands of flowers, the Soviet people had only three funerals. 
How did the incident affect the NASA missions? NASA officials received the news much earlier and, within a month, conducted a complete overhaul of the hatches, valves, windows, and wiring and fittings. Anywhere a leak could occur in the Apollo Lunar and Command Modules. NASA and Roscosmos also started making astronauts wear pressure suits during the last part of a mission, especially when they're coming back down to Earth. The Apollo 13 Accident the Apollo 13 failure was due to an explosion and rupture of the number 2 oxygen tank in the service module. The explosion either broke the line or damaged the valve on the number 1 oxygen tank, which caused it to lose oxygen quickly. The service module bay number 4 cover was blown off, all oxygen supplies were lost within 3-4 to four hours, along with the electrical power, water, and propulsion components. The oxygen tanks were completely insulated in spherical tanks that contained liquid oxygen with a fill line and a heater running through the middle. The number 2 oxygen tank used in Apollo 13 was originally installed in Apollo 10, which was removed from Apollo 10 for modification and was dropped 2 inches during extraction, slightly jarring the internal filling line. In Apollo 13, James Lovell piloted the commanded module, Fred Hayes piloted the lunar module, and John Jack Swigert piloted the spacecraft. Luckily, all of the crew members made it through a devastating mishap, leading some to call a mission a successful failure. What caused the accident? The oxygen tanks were originally designed to take 28V DC power from the command and service modules. However, the tanks were redesigned to also run on 65V DC power from the Kennedy Space Center ground. All the parts were enhanced to accept 65V except for the thermostatic heater switches, which were ignored. These switches were designed to open and shut off the heater when the tank temperature reached 80 degrees Fahrenheit. During the pre-flight testing, tank number 2 was showing abnormalities and would not empty properly, possibly due to a damaged fill line. On Earth, the tanks were emptied by forcing gaseous oxygen into the tank and forcing the liquid oxygen out. In space, there was no need to empty the tanks. Heaters in the tanks were commonly used for very short periods to heat the interior, slightly increasing the pressure to keep the oxygen flowing through the internal environment. It was, however, decided to use a heater to boil off the extra oxygen, which requires 8 hours of 65 volt direct current. This probably damaged the thermostatically controlled switches on the heater, which were made for 28 volts only. The switches are believed to have been welded, allowing the tank to locally rise to over 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The gauges measuring the temperature inside the tank were designed to only measure 80 degrees Fahrenheit, so extreme heating was not noted. Extreme temperatures caused the tank to empty, but the Teflon insulation on the wires that power the fans in the tank was badly damaged. After 56 hours at approximately 306 UT on April 14, 1970, the tank's electric fans were turned on for the mission's third cryo-mixing, a process to mix the liquid oxygen inside the tank, which would tend to stratify. The exposed fan wires shorted out in the pure oxygen environment and the Teflon insulation ignited. This fire quickly heated up and increased the oxygen pressure inside the tank and was able to spread along the wires to the electrical wiring on the side of the tank, which weakened and ruptured under the pressure, which resulted in the number 2 oxygen tank exploding. This caused damage to the number 1 tank and parts of the inside of the service module and blew out the number 4 cover. These missions stand today as an example of the dangers of space travel and NASA's creative minds working together to save lives on the flight. The Apollo 13 mission celebrated its 50th anniversary on April 11, 2020. In ancient times, men looked at the stars and saw their heroes in the constellations. In modern times, we do much the same, but our heroes are epic men of flesh and blood. That's all the time we have for now. We hope you found the video interesting, and if you did, like and share this video. And don't forget to also subscribe to our channel. See you soon in the next video.